Hey, how's it going, everyone? Sitting low here again, and I'm um, just coming at you guys with a quick video. I'm actually uh, about to sell this truck, actually. I, I think the guy's uh, pretty serious about it, so I figured why not have a little fun with it before I send it off and uh, make a quick video and try to explain to you guys out there, anyone who's interested in learning how Air Ride uh, actually works on these things, and it's not that difficult. You know, I mean, you see, uh, you see the cars going up and down and whatnot, and so a lot of you people think it's like some kind of crazy Houdini magic, and there's some a lot of uh, fabrication and weird shit involved. Which I mean, there there is in a sense, but at the end of the day, it's it's dead simple. Air Ride's been around since shit, since like the 50s or 60s or something like that. They started putting on like a uh, you know freight trucks and stuff like that, but somehow evolved, and now it's pretty much offered on like cars from the factory but not not how we're doing it anyways but uh you know for uh, air ride it's pretty simple like I was saying there's like four actually there's one two three five major components okay you got a compressor you got a tank which holds the air that the compressor makes then you got your solenoid valves which is usually two of them per bag and then you've got your airbag which uh, pardon my crude drawing, I just whipped it up uh, on a piece of paper. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to try to explain to you guys basically how this shit works because, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have often wondered or, you know, some of you may know somebody that has a, a bagged car or truck and, you know, they try to explain it to you and you're actually clueless because you don't know what the fuck they're talking about. So hopefully this will shed a little bit of light on, you know, what makes these things go up and down and how it all works. So here we go. <clears throat> First off, you've got your compressor. Your compressor is powered off your, you know, obviously your battery. Or actually, that doesn't even really matter because a lot of a lot of these days they've got uh, engine-driven uh, compressors on these cars these days. But for the most part, we're going to keep it simple and we're just going to rock the standard electric air compressor that's been around for decades. So you've got your air compressor, okay? And what that thing does is when you kick it on, it pumps up just like it would. <clears throat> you know your normal house or tire air compressor and it fills this storage tank and in between here I drew a check valve which is a one-way valve that only lets air flow this way and not this way that way when it stops pumping pressure through the you know through the valve and you turn the compressor off it relieves the pressure at the head it's just kind of a thing to keep your uh, tank pressure from back feeding out through the head and uh, you know adding a little life to your uh, compressor but anyway so you got the compressor filling up the air tank the air tank will hold you know anywhere well pretty much whatever you want to whatever it's rated to between you know zero and I've seen people run 300 psi in them I wouldn't recommend that I wouldn't recommend anything over 150 to be honest with you but hey maybe I'm a pussy and I just I don't like the idea of blowing my air tank up I mean it says right on it max pressure rated 150 psi so not really trying to test the limits or the boundaries there but anyway compressor fills the tank to about 150 psi and it stores all that air in the tank it doesn't go anywhere it's just hanging out now let's say you want to lift the vehicle up well that's where these solenoid valves come into play as you can see here there's one two and I drew this you know, blue. Uh, it's supposed to be a T fitting because they're normally teed together in a fashion similar to this. It does not exactly like that, but the same principle. Uh, the two valves are teed together. So you got the air in the tank, and let's say you want to raise the vehicle up. You have these rocker switches, which are also powered off your battery, and uh, they p activate the solenoid valves, which are pretty much just a electromagnetic coil that creates a you know. A, strong magnetic magnetic field and uh, lifts the little plunger and valve assembly inside the valve but uh you know let's just try to keep it simple here but uh you know you hit the rocker switch it activates just this one solenoid valve and allows the air to bypass through the valve and into the bag thus inflating it okay that's all good you want to fill it some more hit this valve again it'll fill it some more so what you're actually doing is you're taking stored air from in this tank and you're allowing it to pass through the valve into the bag where it's in a sense being stored in the bag and allowing your uh, 
vehicle to ride on a cushion of air that's in this uh, rubber airbag here. Now when you, wanna, when you want the vehicle to go down, you simply energize the secondary valve. And what it's doing at that point is it's taking all the air that's in you know, this area here, trapped in this area, and allows it to escape back into the uh, atmosphere, you know, or, you know, just back into the air, you know, it, it doesn't go back into the tank or anything like that, it just goes out into the air. So, pretty simple. I'm sorry if I confused the hell out of you by uh, trying to explain, but I, I just, I have a tendency to over explain some things sometimes, but I just want to be somewhat thorough, you know what I mean, but let's run by it again. Compressor, filling up the tank, tank stores the air. When you want the vehicle to go up, you flip the switch, that activates the, you know, solenoid one or the fill valve, whatever you want to call it, and allows the air to pass through here and into the bag, allow it to expand, fill up, lift the vehicle. Now when you want to drop the vehicle on the ground, that's where this guy comes into play. You energize this one, and it allows all the air to that's trapped in between here to escape. Onto there. That's that noise you hear when you hear a uh, air ride car go. Psh, that means it's you know letting some air out. So uh, yeah, sort of like that guy just did actually. So I don't know if you guys could hear that, but now let's take it over to this thing and uh, try to explain how it works on this thing. I mean, I'm sure the graph did all right, but the graph pretty much, or the the the, the diagram I drew up, is pretty much just the basic principle of it. There's hundreds of ways you can plumb and install your air ride. There's so many different variances of compressors and valves and <clears throat> just so many different ways you can go about it. So judging off the diagram, if somebody were to come and see a setup like mine I got back here, they wouldn't, you know, really, you know, that don't have just typical air tanks and the compressor and this and that. The tanks are actually hidden back here. <clears throat> and I've got all my valves and everything. Well, actually, these four are just for the rear bags, okay? And my compressor is actually down here, and I plumbed it into this manifold block is what I refer to it as. It's just kind of like an aluminum block with a bunch of ports drilled into it that allowed me to, you know, accommodate all my airlines and fittings uh, without having to just have a bunch of T-fittings and shit everywhere. So it's just kind of a simpler, cleaner way of doing it. But uh, <clears throat> same principle, compressor right there, and normally these compressors have a check valve built right into the end of the, the air hose, and on these uh, compressor lines, you don't just want to use standard air line, I'll tell you from experience, these compressors get extremely hot when they're pumping up, so that's why they use this uh, uh, steel braided uh, stainless line or a lot of people sometimes use copper, a lot of people are starting to use copper in their setups these days which looks really nice and uh, I added a secondary check valve just to be on the safer side <clears throat> because I can't always, you can't always rely on the shit that comes from the factory but anyway same principle the compressor fills what is sharing all this manifold block and it's filling, it's coming all the way down this big old fat blue hose into this tank and the manifold block is also a means of allowing me to run two storage tanks because I have one saddling that frame rail over there and they all it all shares the same common pressure you know this this tank won't have less or more uh, pressure than that one due to this manifold block so it's kind of kind of neat and uh, here's the valves I was talking about this would be the fill valve and as you can see here the line comes from the fill valve, winds down around here, and goes into our friend, the airbag. Now, where that T-fitting comes in, that would be this guy here, and this would be the release valve. And I got this uh, silencer coming off of it just to, just to kind of muffle that, that loud uh, sound of the, uh, the air escaping the exhaust port. So, you know, some people like it loud when you hit the switch and it just you know, stupid loud like that, but I, I prefer mine on the, just tone it down a little bit, I mean, you can still hear it, but regardless. Tank's got the pressure. Pressure's stored all through these lines. 
I mean, these these lines got a hundred and whatever whatever pressure's in the tank is what this system is seeing all throughout here. Fill valve, energize this fill valve via the switch in the truck right there, and it will fill this bag up. <clears throat> and then when you want to lower the vehicle, you energize this solenoid by hitting the switch the opposite way. I have a two-way typically want to use two-way rocker switches that way it goes up and down on the same switch you don't want to have like an up switch and a down switch you know two I mean like I said there's different variances you can do it any way you want this is just how mine is I'm just trying to explain the basic principles so uh, let's try to show you this shit working here there's our friend the airbag it's about halfway full right now now let's say I want to raise a vehicle what did we learn today? The air is hanging out in the tank, waiting at that solenoid valve, the first one to lift the truck. And all I got to do is hit that switch, and it allows the air to sneak by it and inflate the bag more, which is exactly what we wanted to do. But now, there are some cute girls up ahead, and chicks like they'll see the low rider on the ground, so we got to let some air out. That's where that second solenoid comes in. Activate it, and as you can see, the bag has thus been collapsed, and the vehicle has been lowered. So, I'm pretty sure I covered most of the bases. I'm pretty sure at this point I'm just rambling on, but hopefully this uh, video will help give you guys a better understanding of uh, just how this stuff works. Um, there's also, you know, a couple tricks with this stuff. Like if you're installing a setup in your in your vehicle, you want to make sure that all of your airlines going to and from your airbags and from the valves and whatnot, you want to make sure all that stuff is, you know, pretty much the same length. Like the lines going to the front, I would make them the same length. Same with the rear. Same with where you locate your solenoid valves, because if there's any, you know, it's all about uh, pressure and volume. You know, the uh, the further the further your valves are back from the bag, the more volume of air it has to fill in order to lift the truck. So the closer your valves are to your bags, uh, a the faster the air ride will be, and b. Um, it'll be less volume that the that the air system has to fill up so uh, there's a bonus there and another thing is when your lines are symmetrical and let's say you want to lift you know because in this demonstration we only did uh, one bag there's actually four bags per vehicle there's one on each corner the bags go in place of uh, what used to be the coil springs and uh, in this place the leaf springs but uh, so you got the same thing times four. Like I said, there's there's four there's four bags per uh, vehicle, and then there's two valves per bag. So that would be a total of eight valves if you want a full up and down, side to side, like fully adjustable uh, air ride system. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, it ain't, ain't got to be more any more complicated than that. But like I said, it's all in how you decide to plumb it. I mean, you don't even have to use airbags. A lot, some people use air cylinders. Um, a lot of these Euro cars are starting to use uh, the air struts that have basically an airbag incorporated right into a strut, which is a pretty ingenious idea. And, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. And uh, when it's done right, when you have shock absorbers on your system and, you know, it's engineered right, it rides like an absolute dream. It's like you're riding on a cloud of air. So, hence the name Air Ride. But if it's done wrong, these things can ride janky as fuck and be wobbly death traps on the road. Which, I've seen plenty of those and had to fix plenty of those in my day, so... You know, as long as you have a little bit of common sense and you uh, take your time and uh, measure and calculate everything correctly and just try to keep it, you know, as close to... I... I, I don't want to say as close to factory as possible, but don't try to throw off the geometry and shit way too much. Otherwise, you're just going to end up just with something that, uh, 
I don't know, it just does not function for you properly. So. Um, I don't even know what the hell I was talking about, but... But yeah, that's pretty much Air Ride 101. Now, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully I answered some questions. Hopefully I did not confuse the hell out of you. I guarantee I'm going to go back and watch through this video before I post it and say, Oh my God, I just probably confused the shit out of myself. But <sighs> hopefully it is what it is. One more time just for fun. Compressor fills the tank. Tank holds the air. The air goes to these valves. This valve fills the bag. This valve deflates the bag. You know, I probably could have just kept it short and simple at that, but I wanted to be a little more thorough, and hopefully I was. So. Thanks for watching, you guys, and let me know what you guys think.